All right, it's 8.30, we'll call the meeting to order. Would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Item number three is an invitation for a citizen to schedule time on the commission agenda for an item not listed. Do we have any citizens? It appears not. We'll move on to item four, which is an approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any changes to the agenda? No, I don't have any changes. Seeing none. Will uh, all those in favor of the agenda say aye? Aye. Opposed, nay. Agenda stands approved. Item five is consent agenda, agenda items. We have uh, approval of the minutes, approval of travel requests, approval of personnel action notices, and approval of human services reports. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Most have been made and seconded. Any comments on any of the reports? I did hand out an updated human services report this morning. It is in on your desks in front of you. The only change was, I think they'd left off a couple of the, the wording for approved, the approval wording, so this clarified that. Okay. There were no additional actual reference numbers, but it's just the approval denial information. All right, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll call a roll. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item six is routine business, approval of the claims. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B is department head reports. We will start with Brian after he's ready to go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, July 31 and August 1st, uh, we closed down Brookings County Road 6. Uh, to complete a culvert um, between County Road 7 and County Road 9 that had been laying in the ditch for a while growing roots in it. Uh, we did end up getting that patch back up last week, uh, the 13th and 14th, and there was uh, temporary closures there. August 1st, we submitted the PE grants with the DOT according to our changes that we made in the five-year plan. Uh, the 5th and 6th, uh, we closed County Road 77 down to uh, repair a culvert also, and we patched that back up last week again. And August 7th, we had a pre-construction meeting for a box culvert south of Sinai, and we started construction here on Monday, and hopefully we'll be finished up by the end of next week. Um, sooner if the weather allows. I guess we've gotten all this lovely rain, but we're, we're moving right along on that. Um, August 12th, I uh, was informed by the DOT that Pram Construction got back to work on the bridges south on 77, and then as you guys with our road tour uh, looked at yesterday, that their construction has thus ceased as of the rain we got this weekend. Uh, I was hoping they could keep going, but the uh, water came back over their coffer dams and thus uh, allows them not to work. Um, August 13th, met with Stacy and Larry in regards to our second release of the township funding request, which will be coming up here later in the meeting. Um, August 14th, the uh, Deer Creek Station Bridge, I was informed by Banner that the uh, grout had failed. I, I mentioned that to you guys yesterday. I'm still waiting to hear back on when we're going to have a meeting in regards to that <coughs> and uh, try to expedite that process of removal and, and repair of that grout. 
And the 15th, I met with DOT officials from here on and the contractor of uh, Prairie States out of Sioux Falls uh, for the regrade on Highway 81. They're going to be using Brookings County Road uh, 12 and 11 when hauling material for the project, but only empty trucks will be permitted uh, to use that road. They'll be coming uh, from 14 to 81 and dump their load on the project, and then they'll be using our route to return to Highway 14. I guess, is there any questions on that? I did sign a haul road agreement last week with them in regards to that. The DOT uh, monitors that also to, uh, if there is any damage, they'll be repaired. I any assume, questions? go ahead. I assume when you, uh, uh, they regrout the bridge, There'll be another 28 day waiting period then? Yeah. Unless they're seven or 14 day Pass. breaks return as, you know, anticipated that it'll be at the 4,500 PSI strength. So as soon as that criteria is met, they can go back in and, and place the, the guardrail on the asphalt. Okay. Any other questions for? Hearing none, Brian, thank you very much. Yep. Marty, we'll have the sheriff's report. Good morning. Good morning. Have um, 40 in jail. Uh, I have two that's out of the facility. One's, uh, one's still in Fulton, and uh, I have one in, in, at the Yankton Hospital. 24-7 uh, continues to stay busy, and uh, if you have any questions, I guess it's, like I said, I, I give you a lot of information. If you have any questions about any of it, I'll sure answer them. The only other thing is is that um, uh, Bart Sweeby and myself attended the Mental Health Summit last week, and uh, so, did, so did Dan, and uh, I don't know, maybe Dan will have more to report than I will. I didn't come out of that with a lot of knowledge I didn't already know uh, that makes sense, is that talked a lot about the gaps and things of services, found out that probably Brookings sits a little better than some agencies and other, other areas have more mental health um, facility to go to and so forth. So uh, Vera did talk to us after um, one of the sessions and they plan to come down here in the next couple of weeks and then that we can talk more about <coughs> e-care and how that's going to work for for brookings south dakota or for brookings county so other than that i really didn't come away with uh, a lot of uh, um, a, a lot of information on how the mechanics of the e-care will uh, will work so if you guys have any questions we're continuing to stay busy elkton school started yesterday the rest of the schools will start uh, uh, this coming week. So, but Elkton started uh, started yesterday. So, okay. thank you. Any questions for Marty? Thank you, Marty. We'll move to the uh, Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center. Kristen, your report. Good morning. How Good morning. is everyone? Um, so I know it's been a couple of weeks, so I'll kind of give you a rundown on some of the stuff that we've been doing. Um, at first, maybe an up -down, um, update on some of the facility stuff. Um, we have had train back out, and um, the gentleman who took over as our new account manager is just fantastic. He has a lot of engineering and design abilities, and so that enabled him to, to really look at everything that's going on with the system how it was built and then able to kind of um, look at how we can redesign a couple of the units and, and make that more efficient. Um, in the process, we did have a switch go out in our outdoor unit and it did take a couple of days to find the part and then get that put back in. Um, wasn't an expensive part, just something that goes out in an outdoor unit. Um, we did have a lift station um, a warning come on, and I think Stacy can give just a brief update more than I can on that. It was after, it was a couple of, three weeks ago maybe now, two, three weeks ago on a Monday, we get a call um, about the lift station 
Uh, I think the utilities monitors that has a monitor on that mm -hmm. informed us that the lift station on the east side of the Outdoor Adventure Center had gone out. Um, so we got an electrician and a plumber there to take a look at it. It was a pretty simple fix. There's actually an electrical box down inside the lift station and a wire nut had fallen off, I think just because of the, the amount of rain um, that comes off, mm -hmm. not just from, not just the, the sewer part, but there was, there's some runoff issues from the roof where it's draining right directly into this, this um, pit basically on that east side that we think it just over time, the wire nut had fallen off. And once that got put back on, started functioning again pretty easy fix overall it just took a little time and to, to figure out exactly what was going on with it but I think some simple fixes were to maybe get some eave spouts to push some of that water away from going directly into that um, base into that basin on the east side of the building um, so yeah I worked with Kristen I, she was she was out so I went out there and was there until they got it working again so no damage, nothing in the building, no water backup, nothing, nothing at all there. So, I did. I did talk to a representative from utilities, and uh, having that electrical box with inside the lift station, I guess, was not an ideal situation because of the moisture and the the gases that he figured that the wires had corroded. Um, they actually have a person from Minnesota that does the city's wiring on those lift stations, and he suggested that sometime we should have them look at that and redo it so it'd be a little better. So, so something to keep in mind for future improvement projects on the building. Yep. Um, other than that, we do have an archery and event coming up September 15th, which is before archery season starts. So we're going to open it up. We have vendors coming in, um, a few things like that, just to get people kind of excited for bow season. Um, the pistol rifle committee did give us a kind of maintenance list and then things they'd like to see going forward into 2021. So we'll have a better idea of, you know, some of the, the ass that they have. <clears throat> and then um, we have chosen a lead mining company. Um, and actually, we went, we went with Action Target who is the same company who built our range. So they have our plans. Um, they know exactly how much rubber to add. They will be putting that in um, as well in, in one entire uh, package for us. So, and they can coordinate our dates of the parking lot, which I know is on the agenda later. Um, so just ended up working out as a great package. And then the last thing I have um, is something that I know Leanne asked for a couple of months ago. And um, she had asked about walk-in traffic during the day. And so since July 8th, we've kind of been tracking it a little bit more specifically. And um, because of events, we've had staff there 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then when we're open, the public range, gun range hours were there 5 to 9. Um, and we've let people have archery day passes just because somebody is there, we can watch cameras, et cetera. So on an average, we have been selling no ads, nothing. This is just walk-in general people, eight day passes per week since we've been doing that in about six weeks. But we've had average of 11 people per day just come in, get information, tours who've never been there before, directed them to the 4-H office, directed them to Game Fish and Parks if neither one of them were there, you know, directed them to SDSU. I've had fish come in that needed to be weighed. Um, you know, I have seen a 25 pound catfish and a tote with ice on it. <laughs> you know, I mean, but directed people to the right areas, kind of strengthening that GFP partnership there too. Um, but we're seeing probably 11 people a day. I would say it's, you know, 10 but the numbers worked out to 11 people per day and that's having somebody staffed from 10 a.m to 9 p.m on the days we're open but 10 a.m to 5 p.m somebody besides myself being there so those figures that you would ask for so the 11 is between 10 and 5 correct okay thanks so any other questions for me that kind of catches you guys up um fall classes are already starting to fill up um, and we've kind of got that situation under control. 
we have the ad going already in the fall winter um, advertising for the city. And so we've already got things lined up. Now it's just filling everything. Okay, any other questions? Thank you much. Next, we'll go to the uh, Veterans Services County Assistance Officer, Mike. I don't have a lot. I uh, One of my veterans talked about coming in this morning, so that's the main reason I came up here. <laughs> but as far as the office goes, it's going pretty well. Uh, it seems like we've pretty much spent most of our uh, utility allowance. The rents seem to be picking up. We're still having a steady supply of people coming in, uh, two or three appointments a day, a lot of them dealing with rent. Uh, I will be attending the Salvation Army. I missed the last couple months of that but the Salvation Army meeting to try and find out uh, how they're doing because it seems like, you know, if uh, that they sh may be able to help pick up some more on that. Okay. Any questions for Mike? If not, thank you, Mike. And we'll go to the weed board. Misty. Good morning. Good morning. I just have a few things. First of all, I'll start out with DOT, the first run, is finished. Um, it was finished about a month ago, is one, well, a month and a half. Um, now we've kind of just waited for farmers to hay the ditches, all that kind of stuff. Total cost uh, for spraying for the first run for DOT was $16,649.85. That's up a bit, but keep in mind, we use the Grassland L on DOT, so that cost raised it. We should be, we should be pretty good for a second run. I have the guys out starting on I-29 uh, with the ATVs to get where the trucks don't reach. So we're starting the DOT today. Um, I think all in all, the Grassland L is working. It's just we're a little more cautious with the Grassland L. We're always cautious, but a little more cautious with that. Um, hopefully, we won't have as many weeds next year. Cross our fingers. <laughs> it took us a little longer this year because of the weather. I know I've reported that before to all you guys. Um, I'm hoping we have a good fall. Maybe the rain will quit. I think Brian can also agree with me that the rain needs to quit. Um, townships, first run is done. Uh, we're starting on the second run. I have guys going every which direction. So we're starting on our second run for townships. The other thing is uh, Nick and Brock, my two ATV drivers, they are done Friday. They start school and they're done Friday. Brock Sortos is willing to come back and work four, four hours, couple, three days a week. I'm not sure his exact schedule yet, but I'm, I'm willing to take whatever help we can get. Um, because we lost Mitch Lang to highway full time. Uh, so we're down to Gary, Egerberg, Mike, Andreessen, and myself now. So if you don't see me in my office, you know where I'm at. Call me. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, we'll see what Brock's schedule, how it plays out. Hopefully, it'll work out for us. In you know, for us. Um, the last thing I have, uh, this is a ways out, but I just got notice we have our district one meeting, which two people have to go to the district meeting and the conference in February to get our grant from the Weed and Pest Commission. We are hosting the district one meeting at the BCOAC. November 6th. I know it's early, but I want to, I'm, I'm inviting you guys. I would appreciate it if a couple of you could come. It's, it's nice to see commissioners there uh, if we can, if we can have you come. And the only thing I really need to do is line up the catering. The state pays for everything. I just need to line everything up. But otherwise, that is all I have unless you've got questions for me. Any questions? Apparently none. Thank you very much, Missy. Thanks. Next, we'll go to County Development, Bob Hill. Good 
Good morning. Good morning. I sent your report, so I'm not going to read through everything. The meetings at the, the elected officials, emergency management meetings have been going well. They've been well received. Sometimes or only the city council and other times it's like a sign I when the whole room was full of people and uh, So it's good. We're getting good response from that and uh, We had our LEPC meeting on August the 15th and I want to thank the B Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center for letting us use their meeting room that that went well August 16th. We had an iPods test we you guys paid the claim on iPods today <laughs> And we went on the computer and we did our, our monthly test. It, it requires a monthly test and we went in and did it. And uh, what that does, that allows us to ensure that if needed, iPods will, will work. And so what we do is we, we start the local test locally. It goes to Washington, D.C., the big iPod center. They review it, make sure it, it all matches what they say we can do. And then they push a message back to us saying it, it was a successful test or not successful. And that one was successful. We'll keep doing that once a month. We're going to keep a log and, and keep doing those tests once a month. Uh, can I ask a question on that before we move yes on? Yes, you may. So, Bob, when we had the tornado warning on Saturday. Yes, ma'am. That didn't come across on iPods. Is there is that not the type of thing? Am I misunderstanding how we use that? The only way that would come across is if I inputted it into iPods. Okay. That would not come out automatically. There was there was a we an emergency message sent out during that tornado and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay. If you want. Thank it's you. Separate from iPods, but <clears throat> we can talk about the tornado messages and when but we send them and when we don't. Will we not be using iPods for tornado warnings? In certain instances, we would. The, the type of storm that we had Saturday night is not. It's not one of those. When Number one, it was radar indicated only. There was no, no tornado that, that we know of, and we, we've checked. We found no damage in Brookings County. So if, if we know there's a tornado in the ground causing damage, then yes, iPods, that's what you use iPods for to go after. We did sound the alarms in Aurora, Bushnell, and Elkton based off radar rotation. And that's, that's all it was based off of. Thank you. So another re thing we could use iPods for is that they had that truck accident up on Hamlin County line in the Brookings County. That would have been an instance where iPods possibly could have been used. We could have drew the box within whatever, whatever parameters that the state of South Dakota wanted for the emergency message. But we we elected to call the individuals as they had the livestock out because not everyone within the boundary that we would have drew has livestock on the Big Sioux River. So there's iPods is a very very tricky thing. If you do it wrong, then you ruin it forever, and and, and people would lose confidence in it. It's got to be got to be something that that we maintain strict control over, in my opinion. And so we're monitoring it. We're on top of it. We we realize it's not a cheap to tool. And we want to use it properly. You know, we speaking of, of the iPods thing. There is people on the on Facebook, social media, saying, "Well, I got my warning on my phone seven minutes before the sirens went off." Well, the way the message came out, it came from the National Weather Service. What, but people don't realize, I don't listen to KSFY, I don't listen to Kello, I don't listen to whatever news you listen to on on the radio or TV. I concentrate on the National Weather Service. It's a federal organization that, weather, that deals with weather, and that's, they're the ones that pushes out the warnings. When they put out the warning, they gave us like a 10-minute warning before it would hit Aurora, and then a 20-minute warning before it would hit Elkton. So that's when we had the sirens set off within in proper times. So it's a... It's going to be a no-win situation for, the, for an emergency manager. We're just going to do the best we can. And in, in both cases, tornadoes did not hit either town. But we're always going to err on the side of safety and, and go from there. If I would have sent an iPods message, I just feel it would, I just wasn't getting the indication that, the, that, the, that, the, you know, that there was a tornado. So we... There's one thing sending out a message on the radio, and Dallas Cole was on the on the 
the phone with me on 910 and, and 1430 and all that. So we was on the air and we also, we, we was also getting calls. I was more worried about the eastern side of the county and then I'm getting a call to open the shelter downstairs and let people into the basement, which is fine. We, we, I went down, and, but I had to lose my tracking capabilities over on the east side of the county when I went downstairs. To, to so we them. did open the shelter? We did open the shelter and we had three individuals. And I, and I just want to say my concern is I had been at Lake Campbell that day. I knew there were people camping out there that weren't listening to the radio and they weren't listening to television. And I called them and said there are tornado warnings. But I pause. My understanding is that that's one of the reasons we decided to invest in that is so our citizens that maybe aren't hearing the sirens because they're not anywhere close to sirens would be getting notification on their phone because most but, but, people have their phone plastered their hip. So, if I may, Mr. Chairman, Lake Campbell never would have got a got a got anything on Saturday night because right. the, the warnings were all eastern South Dakota. Right. Eastern, it it never came even as far as I know. Sinai and and Campbell wasn't involved in the thing. It actually passed by both of them. Just about where the interstate was is where the break was. Then it headed north. Ward is Ward was the central point from what I could determine from, from right. the weather. I understand that, but when they're saying that um, nine miles south of Brookings there's a funnel, okay, that's like Campbell area. So I, how would people know when you're saying nine miles? And that's what was on um, KELO. Was nine miles south. Of and once again, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't mind the KD, KD, DLT. The, the National Weather Service was telling me nine miles south of Aurora, <clears throat> mm -hmm. which is, I, it's, it's. Tip, I'm right. Not, I'm not arguing with no, you. No, no, I understand. That. I just want to be sure we've got in play the system that we're spending the money for for notifying our citizens when when there's a dangerous situation. And I, I feel we do. Okay. But okay. great. That's, we, one, one thing they, they the National Weather Service they put out these warnings on us, the, especially this tornado warnings, and this and the severe thunderstorm warnings. They they break the county down. Either it's the the western half, the southern half, northern half, eastern half. So we get pretty detailed. What happens when you look at media such as TV and and radio? They say, well, Brookings County is involved in a severe a tornado warning. Well, true, Brookings County is in a, but we don't set the sirens off in Brookings for a tornado warning that's only affecting the, the city of Elkton. And that's, right. that's where the confusion comes in, in, in my opinion. But we'll, we'll keep plugging away at it, and we've got no problem monitoring and, and setting off what we can. We just, we, we yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. The, the briefing in Volga on August 19th, I had my deputy, Richard Hogan, came with me out there so he could see how I do it because this is a, a state and local agreement requirement yearly, and if I'm not available to go to a local community to give a, a local emergency manager briefing, it's my job for him to step in and, and do the briefing for me. So I took him to Volga with me and showed him how I do. Also, yesterday on Monday, Friday, we had gotten a call from... Office of Emergency Management, that FEMA was given a briefing on inputting the paperwork, and that briefing was down at the big FEMA regional center in Sioux Falls at the old Sears store, and they wanted a representative from our office down there to get some training. So I, I made the decision to send Ray Lynn down there and do the FEMA training. We'll turn a late travel request in at the next county commission meeting to cover that travel. But I couldn't break loose, me and Richard, because we was already scheduled for the Volga briefing. So we, the, work, the office is working good. We just had to close the office over lunch, and two of us in Volga, one of us in Sioux Falls. And there is a flood warning issued right now for the Big Sioux River north of Bruce. And that tells me that it, it says Big Sioux River at Esteline, but it does include the northern part of Brookings County down to Bruce which tells me that now that Esteline's flooding is going to come down and the next Bruce will, will flood, then the Big Sioux River will flood down where the, the nice 77 bridges are trying to be worked on, that water is going to keep coming up. So 
they was talking about the the rain lessening up. From what I heard, there, it's just going to be a wet wet fall. So okay. for our information, we do have a nine o'clock schedule. Do you have a lot left? Oh, yes, no. September thirteenth, we're going to have preparedness day, and we're going to have an open house for the storm shelter downstairs, and that's it. Okay. Any other questions for Bob? When is the open house on the storm shelter? September 13th. 13th. Thank you. Okay. It'll be a National Preparedness Day event for Brookings County. All right. Thank you, Bob. We do have a 9 o'clock scheduled agenda item. Travis Creever, a discussion and possible action to allow Mr. Krieger to do metal detecting on the courthouse grounds. I think we'll have the discussion first, so take it to your Travis. Please come up and introduce yourself. I, uh, Travis Krieger, I've been doing the metal detecting since I've been about uh, 12, I suppose. Um, I've, uh, I've searched all over the, all over the states, states. Um, so, uh, how, how it works is, uh, I look for a property that's basically undisturbed. Um, like a courthouse, I've hunted, uh, Madison, South Dakota, a courthouse there, uh, Pipestone, Flandreau, Dual County Courthouse. Um, and I, you know, I never thought about hunting the one in my home. I live in Brookings County. I have an acreage up by Lake Ponset. But uh, so anyhow, I uh, got a metal detector, uh, fairly high end, uh, isolate a signal. I cut a really small plug, pull it up, pull the item out, put it down. There's no trace, no sign. You can't tell I was there. Basically, everything's undisturbed. Okay. Anything else? That, that's basically it. Questions from the commissioners? Who wants to go first? Anybody? I spoke with a groundskeeper, and he said that I had to, and usually I do. It's a procedure to go before the Board of, board of Commissioners to get seek We approval. appreciate that. The only other question I would have, uh, you know, you've asked for permission, and we appreciate that. But if others see you out there <laughs> doing metal detecting, will others just show up? Do you know, Marty, is there a problem or an issue with that? Have you ever seen anybody out there metal detecting, Marty, or your staff, or anybody? What's that? If there, if there are any value to them or anything, I, uh, I'll, I'll let, you know, I, if they're uh, unique to the county or whatever, a lot of times I'll donate them to a local museum. I, I just enjoy doing it as a hobby. I don't do it for the... Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'm curious about uh, depth for the overall, and then what do we do about utility locates in situations uh, where we may have utilities? Depth is usually five to seven inches is where the oh, good okay. stuff hides. So, and I can hear underground sprinklers. I can hear. I, I don't. Okay. I always isolate the object before I dig. Perfect. And, and, and like I said, the, the the hole is usually about this big around. And it's five to six inches deep, and so there's Great. no no chance of hitting a, a utility or anything. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I'm just curious because you've done a number of courthouses. Do you report back to us what you found, or if I find anything of value, yeah, okay. yep, yes, I do. And a lot of times the groundskeeper will keep an eye on me just for the first little bit. You know, if there's any, um, uh, like Flandreau, they had the the groundskeeper watch us for I don't know the first. 10 minutes. I, I was hunting with another gentleman over there who approached the courthouse at the exact same time I did. Uh, we, we hadn't met each other, but. What type of things are you normally finding in courthouses? Uh, Indian head pennies, um, an old token once in a while. Uh, usually dating about the, the, the courthouse. I've got, yeah, just old Indian head pennies. They come out of the ground looking like this. All right, any further questions? It appears we would need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Please let us know if you find anything interesting. Will do. Thank you. Or report it to either Stacy or Marty. Okay. All right. Save our best for last, Vicki.
All the money. Treasury report. Finance office. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Just to give you an update on our office, um, legislative audit um, from Peer it came last week so they're just starting the process we just have one auditor here so it'll probably be a time consuming process um i think there'll be a couple more coming eventually but they're just doing the start of the 2018 audit last week we had three from our office attend the oacoma sedasis it's a software users group <laughs> meeting and um they got Good information from that. And tomorrow there is a eight county or ten county meeting in dual county, so Kristen and I will be attending that. And you should have received in your packet the finance officer's report for July. And just going through it, just um, with the revenue and the expenditures, we are just completely on target. Um, with July being 58.33% of the month completed, the revenues are at 55.95, which is down just a hair, and that's because a property tax second half isn't in. And then the expenses are at 55.97. So um, there really isn't any issues looking at judicial and behavioral health, which a lot of times we are over. Um, we're not towards the end of the year yet, so that still could happen. But right now, we are just on target with everything, all the revenues and expenditures for general fund, road and bridge fund, pretty much all the funds. We're over a little bit on 24-7, and we're watching that, and we know why. So we'll keep an eye on that. And also, um, the surplus analysis we are down just a hair with 26.6, but we've done the third quarter transfers already, so that's probably why. Um, it's pretty much on target for what it used to be back about three years ago, but the last <laughs> couple of years we've been higher than that, but nothing to be concerned about. We are in good shape there. And then we also have the be it noted items, the auditor's account with the treasurer, the payroll and additives totals, the highway expenditure report, and the register of deeds statement of fees collected for the month of July. So any questions on any of the report? Any questions from the commission? Okay. None. Thank, Thank you, you, Vicki. All right, we've got a few minutes yet before our 915 scheduled item. We'll move on to regular business. Item 8A, action to approve resolution number 19-39, a plat of block one, HESPE edition in the north one half of the northwest quarter section of section 26, township 110 north, range 51 west of the 5th Prime Meridian, Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. We'll have a report from Bob. Yeah, we heard all, all the enclosed plats at our August planning meeting and it was approved by the planning commission with the recommendation that this board approves all of them. Thank you, Bob. Any questions from the commissioners? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item B is an action to approve resolution number 19-40, a plat lot. 49A of the first edition of Lake Ponset Heights subdivision in lot two, section five, township 112 North, range 52 West of the fifth prime meridian, Brookings County, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Bob, a report? Same thing, it was heard on the August planning meeting schedule, approved and sent to this board with a recommendation that you approve it also. Thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? Any questions? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Brogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item C is an action to approve resolution number 19-41, a resolution placing mobile homes on the uncollectible list. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments? Any questions on the list? Vicki? 
this is just a <coughs> listing of um, the ones that came back as unlivable or they were gone. A lot of them this year were underwater out on South Main, and there was one that was burnt down. So it's just the list of uncollectibles that we um, take off the tax rolls, but we still have them available to put back on the tax rolls in case um, there's ever any way we can collect for them. We have done that in the past. One time we could put it back on and collect. Sure. But right now they were basically not much to them. I went out to the sale this year with, with Scott and one of the deputies, and it's, it was kind of an eye-opener what some of these were like. Nobody lived in any of them, and they were just completely a disaster. Okay. Any questions from the commission? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item D is an action to approve agreement number 19-53A State of South Dakota Department of Public Safety Office of Emergency Management 2020 Local Emergency Management Performance Grant Subrecipient Agreement. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Bob, report. Yes, I put a quick staff report on you guys' uh, folder earlier. It uh, basically, it's an the same type of document that we get yearly. We submitted it to the state's attorney's office. Counselor Nelson reviewed it. I had a finance officer, Busef, she filled out one of the documents in it to assist us. And um, one page had to be updated by the state of South Dakota. All that's been returned to us. You've got the complete document in front of it. And the, the biggest thing is that they changed the name from state and local agreement to local emergency management grant. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item E is an action to approve agreement 1954, an easement for use of county road right of way made by KC Dairies LLP. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any report on this? Brian, any report? This is just to follow up uh, from earlier this spring when we had a lot of the manure pipes uh, around our right of way. We're just cleaning cleaning this up to ensure that that don't happen again. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments? Questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Orzma? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. We'll do that as voice vote. Next time, item F is an action to a Approve agreement number 1955, an easement for use of county road right of way made by Kodiak Pork RE LLC. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and second. Report. This is a new permit. Um, this is uh, on County Road 27 uh, for that new hog barn uh, just south of Highway 14. All right. Thank you. Any comments from the commission? Any comments? You okay with if that? Everything, you, you checked it out and everything, and you're good with it? Yeah, okay. yep. I review every site. Right. Okay, any additional comments or questions? If not, we'll call the roll. Or, excuse me, this one we can do by voice vote, so let me go ahead. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Item G is an action to approve notice of award to Bose Construction for asphalt paving at Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center North parking lot. So, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion be made and seconded. Any questions? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. It is 9.15. We will move into our 9.15 scheduled item. Mr. Chair, I'm yes. going to recuse myself on this item. Noted. Item B, under scheduled agenda items, 915, is a public hearing and action to, uh, to approve resolution number 19-38, a resolution in order superseding the resolution of 19-16 and approving the vacation of the following described <laughs> avenue. First Avenue East, located between lots 56, 57, 58, 63, 64, and 65, located in the plat entitled First Edition Lake Ponset Heights Subdivision, in Government Lot 2 of Section 5, Township 112, Range 52, west of the 5th Prime Meridian, Brookings, South Dakota. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
Second. There a second? Got a second? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> report on this from anybody? Bob, is there a report on this? Or we have to open, we have to have public, the public I'll hearing. open and close the public hearing first. So anybody from the public like to address this resolution? Yeah, come on up and identify yourselves. The microphone is on. Morning, uh, Jesse Ronning Long with Shad Swedlin, um, who is one of the uh, <coughs> property owners. We were here before you a couple months ago. Um, we got approved. Uh, it was sent to the registered deeds and was rejected. Um, so as you can see, we inserted really just the first avenue east located at between and then the legal description to more properly describe what exactly was being vacated. Um, that was the concern of the Register of Deeds. We have now since, you know, had the Register of Deeds approve it. We work with uh, the county's office and I think we're, we should be in good shape, ready to have it recorded going forward. But yeah, we were before you a couple months ago was approved. Um, we just had to make sure we described it a little bit better for the purpose of the Register of Deeds. Okay, any other comments? Any, anybody else uh, has a public hearing? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open it up for board comments. Any comments from the board? Do we have any paperwork from Bev on this being? No, I've been working with Bev though when we've got the, the changes to the resolution. She is now comfortable with this, with this updated language. Okay, any other questions or comments? Any other questions or comments? Thank you, you guys, or excuse, but thank you. Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Jensen? Aye. Forsma? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Let's move to item H, an action to approve agreement number 19-56, an agreement between Brookings County and Bose Construction for asphalt paving at the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center North parking lot. So, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any comments about this one? Any comments? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. We'll wait for just a moment. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Pierce comes back, I guess. Commissioner Pierce, you up to date on this particular action item? I am. All right, thank you. Any comments from you? No. Hearing none, then we'll call the roll. Pierce? Aye. Borsma? Aye. Uh, Krogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item I is an action to approve the notice to proceed for Bulls construction for asphalt paving at the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center North parking lot. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion be made and seconded. Any comments from the commission? Any comments from anybody? Kristen, do you need to make a comment? You may. Okay, Stacy and I had just a clarification. Um, so the date on there shows August, nothing, 2019. So do we have any kind of a clarification on the date of commencement? Commencement or of completion? The Completion's October 15. Right, but do you have a date they're gonna start? start. No. <coughs> Essentially it's Once they're after ordered. today, right? I think it could be any time after today. If there is a specific date, you um, won't get that. Well, only, I mean, I think what we probably, we probably need to figure out those, find out when they're going to be there so we can give notice. And if we have any projects or any events right. going on where, like, you can put cones out and say, okay, this is where you can park. Right. So I think it could be today's date. That would be the soonest that they could start. Right. And then if Kristen reaches out to, to Bo's uh, to, to see if we can't work out at least when? some kind of a timeline. I mean, if we're going to have a huge member event, I don't want in them to have nowhere to park right. or no way to get to the building, which is the big thing. Yeah. It's my guess they'd wait till softball season was over to start this. But Yeah, that's... We're softball gonna... season starts and then flag football and youth football starts. Right. And it goes straight in. So I don't know that there's ever going and to be a perfect time exactly. to do this, but we just need to move ahead. So that was my question is what date, I know the completion date, but if you guys had heard anything from Bose on a roughly when they would like to do this project. I, I stopped at city office last week and asked to sit on, sit in on the pre-construction meeting. 
and I'm sure at that time they will probably have a date they're presumably going to start on it. So perfect. Thanks. Do we want to insert a date? Typical practice for notice to proceed is the date of action. Okay. Would you? Yeah. Would you like to make an amendment to the motion to include include today's date? Yeah, we should have it as an amendment. No, let's just do an amendment. We'll just clarify it. Just put in today's. I'd move to amend the original motion to include today's date. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on today's date? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Uh, no. The original motion as amended. Is there any comments? No comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thank you. Motion passes. I'm never a fan of friendly amendments. They don't really exist. <laughs> so we'll get to the regular amendments. Item J is a discussion and possible action to approve township culvert grant applications. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Anybody want to second? The second. <laughs> Thank you. A motion in a second. We'll have a uh, uh, report or comments here. Any comments or questions on the culvert grant applications? Included in your packet was information. Um, I have the spreadsheet up round two uh, down at the bottom of that. Um, you can see the requested <coughs> amounts. There were two, again, from Preston Township. These were actually the same two projects that we had approved during the first round. However, the contractor had submitted an inaccurate quote for the price of the culverts and then let them know that later. So um, without our additional dollars, um, it indicated that they may not be able to do the project. So it would be an additional $1,416 per project in Preston Township. And then there were also requests from Sherman Township and Sterling Township um, my understanding, and Brian can maybe get into this a little bit more, but the culverts, they, they don't meet that 16 square foot requirement per, per statute. Okay, any comments, Brian? Um, like I said, I, I go out and review each of these, and I did measure those culverts, and uh, the anticipated culverts that they had proposed to put in there, I wouldn't feel comfortable uh, doing that as it may affect the drainage. Uh, downstream of those culverts because they in, they were going to put in larger uh, than what is there, and without a study being done, I didn't I don't feel comfortable with those. And then, like Stacy mentioned, they don't currently meet the 16 square feet in opening. Okay. Any questions or comments? Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Borzma. Aye. Brogman? Aye. Jensen? Aye. Pierce? Aye. Bartley? Aye. Motion carries. Item K is an action to approve an appointment to the Brookings County Planning and Zoning Commission in District 4 to fill an unexpired term. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. The application is from Tom Davis, who's been on the zoning board in the past. Uh, do we have any other information, Bob or Stacy, on this request? Mr. Davis has been an alternate since we first started the alternates. He's been performing an outstanding job as an alternate, so I have no issue with him being appointed a full-fledged member. He's replacing our former chairperson who passed away a month or so ago. Okay. I just had one question, and, right. and Bob, I didn't look myself, but he meets the district requirements, right? Yes, ma'am. He is in that, in that district, lives in that district. Thank you. Are we looking at replacing the alternates then? And, and yes, that would be the next request to the county commission department head to uh, find an alternate. Any other comments? Bob, will they, will they uh, once Mr. Davis is in, uh, on the board, will they reelect the chairman then, or will he take over as chairman? No, the, the chairperson is Kimberly Elinkovich. And, and okay. that's per our bylaws. Our bylaws state that the the vice chairperson automatically becomes the chairperson until the end of the term, which, which is December. 
And then we did have an election for, and, and we voted in Chad Ford as our new vice chairperson at the, at the last meeting. All Mr. Davis is doing is becoming a board member. All right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And this is, this actually fills an unexpired term through the end of this year. So you will be seeing this position re-advertised here in the, probably the next four to six weeks for all of the positions that are up for um, appointment January 1. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. And we'll move on to item nine, the commission department director's report. As Vicki had noted in her finance officer's report, we had to discuss the general fund surplus information. Um, it is a little bit lower than it has been the last couple of years, but overall um, just actually slightly above average for the um, 11, 9, 11 years, whatever it's been that we've been tracking this. So um, so I think we're, we're just fine. Uh, the city is organizing their complete count committee for the census next year. Uh, Mayor Corbett had reached out to me, and in the past it has been the chairperson that has been a part of that committee. Um, but if you have that discussion and would like to appoint someone else to that committee, uh, let me know and I can get back in touch with Mayor Corbett so that uh, whoever that is, he knows and can start including them on meeting minutes and notes and agendas and, and whatnot. Any thoughts? Doesn't necessarily have to be the chair. Would anybody like to serve on that committee? If, if you don't want to do it, Mike, I would do it. Thank but you. if you'd like to do it, that's, you, I don't want to step on any toes. You're welcome <laughs> to sit on that committee. Without objection, I will appoint you to that committee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. That was easy. Um, in your included with my packet were the uh, proposed resolution and policy changes for the South Dakota Association of County Commissioners. Those will be reviewed as part of the caucus uh, meetings that first night, Monday night, out at convention out in Pier in the middle of September, and then at the general um, the general session at the. The last thing on Tuesday, those will be voted on. So you can take a chance to review those. I am guessing that tomorrow at our 10 county meeting, um, we will be hearing all about them. So if you have any other questions or concerns, you can discuss them kind of as that group tomorrow as well. But they are included for you to look at in, in along with my report in the packet. You did receive information. The next uh, county employee social is Sunday, September 22nd. It's going to be out at Goodroots Farm and Gardens at 530. That flyer is attached. Um, yesterday, we started our county tour and got about halfway done before time ran out. So I had mentioned yesterday, if you've had a chance to look at schedules to see when you would like to reschedule to do the second half of the tour. Does anything um, stand out? I don't know. You know, if there's something, Ryan, that doesn't work for you too, you'd be important to this process as well. Anything, any dates anybody wants to throw out? I know Commissioner Bartley is gone, correct? Do you leave for? You're uh, out in D.C. for a... Yeah, September 9th, 10th and 11th, I'm gone. Okay. And then the next Monday, Tuesday, 16th, 17th, we're out in Pier. Joint jurisdiction is on the 19th. Hey, thoughts on dates for anybody? The 5th, the 12th? Or do we want to stick to... We have commission meetings the 3rd, the 24th of September. Those first two weeks of September are fine. 
second okay. week in September. Afternoon of the third is open. Anybody? Anybody? I would have to. I'm not available that afternoon, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily matter either. If that works for everybody else. Twelfth. 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 Takes up the whole day. What's that? Twelfth. Twelfth works for me. Are you talking about the twelfth of, of um, September? Well, actually, it probably doesn't work for me since I just get back from DC. I'm going to have appointments. I'm sure. What about the fifth? Works. fifth that works. afternoon? No. No. Angie, no. Whoever do them on Fridays. Do a morning one on a Friday. The sixth or the thirteenth? I can't on the sixth. Put in the thirteenth. Okay. Neither am I. Doodle poll. Sounds like a doodle poll to figure it out. <laughs> Only include the dates Brian can do it, and then we'll go from there. If it's got to be on Friday, I can do it Friday, too. Super. If we do a Friday, let's just do it in the morning. Yeah, 13th. Hmm? Friday the 13th. Okay. Friday Works. 13th. Yeah. Sure. What time is the open house for the storm shelter? Definitely goes from like 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So we could do, if you want to meet out there, do you want to start early? Start it, meet out there at 8.30? I, I won't be able to. My... I'm having a tough time with my computer here. All of a sudden, I hit that thing. And I state prevention for the realtors are the week of the 9th to the 13th. How about the 6th? Anybody? Sixth is fine. No. 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 How about the 18th or the 20th? 18th in the morning. That will work. That will work. Yes. Is it possible 18th in the afternoon or no? <laughs> Let's just go ahead and do a doodle poll. I think it might work the best. Everybody okay with that? All right. Let's just do that and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay. okay, and then some upcoming dates this afternoon. Um, once we finish up here, today is the Conservation District Tour. We're meeting at their office uh, on 6th Street. It's in the west part of the movie theater parking lot there. Um, and try to be there by about 1145 is our plan. Um, tomorrow we do have Sioux Valley Commissioner's Quarterly Meeting. That starts at noon. It's at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Clear Lake. Uh, I have RSVP'd for four of you, all of you except for Commissioner Bartley, to attend that tomorrow. I'm not attending that, Stacy. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. I can't. You cannot? No. Okay. Um, that starts at what time? Noon. Noon. Yep. Labor Day holiday, September, Monday, September 2nd. Um, each of you I handed out this morning as part of your kind of your mail packet, there was um, an invitation uh, for an open house and shareholder meeting out at Dactronics on Wednesday, September 4th. The open house is from 5 to 7 with the shareholder meeting at 7. You, and then, as we mentioned, the 16th and 17th of... Um, September fall convention is that. So. And that's all I have unless you have any. I also did hand out a couple other things today. Just a, You've seen it before. It's been in the packet before, but the, the tour information for today, kind of the agenda. And then it was included in your packet as well today, but I handed out a hard copy of the bridge map that Brian had provided. Thank you. Item 10 is the state's attorney's office report. Dan? 
Yeah, just kind of following up where Marty left off. Um, I also attended the summit uh, for mental health in the criminal justice um, system. This was a summit that was uh, brought by the UJS, and so they kind of invited a lot of the stakeholders uh, to uh, involving the specific counties. And so I'm not sure how much the commission knows about Brookings County is going to pilot what has been termed telehealth. Uh, this is a system that Avera is using, and so what it comprises of is going to be a iPad that the deputy sheriffs will be uh, given, and if they encounter a situation where they respond to a scene and there's a suspect um, or person that they come in contact with that is uh, dealing with a mental health issue, um, and so the Deputies have been trained with the crisis response, uh, and so they are able to, uh, you know, determine whether or not this is a mental health issue. What they can do then is fire up that iPad, uh, and then that will go down to a mental health provider down in Sioux Falls at Avera Behavioral, and then that person who's dealing with the mental health crisis will be able to interact via iPad with a mental health provider, um, and then that mental health provider will be able to uh, assist in what the proper course is in terms of treatment, uh, what the seriousness is of the issue. Um, and so they want to basically expedite the mental health treatment on scene. Um, and so there will be an on scene aspect of the telehealth, but then also there'll be telehealth services available at the jail. Um, and so they're hoping to roll this out this fall. Is that correct, Marty? Yeah, so this fall, probably October, I think, is what I heard, is when the iPads will arrive, there'll be a training, and then hopefully we'll be able to implement that. Um, whether or not the police department, University PD, uh, is on board with that, I, I think, remains to be seen. Um, and so that was one aspect of the uh, summit. The other aspect uh, was something that we may start doing here in Brookings County uh, that Coddington County is currently doing. And so Judge McCann up there has developed a questionnaire uh, that if there's someone who's arrested where there's a mental health issue that's been determined, um, they'll go through a list of questions. And then depending on what the answers are to that question, they'll tally that up. Um, and they'll let the judge know what the uh, result is on that questionnaire. And then it's just only available to the judge and the defense attorney. Um, but that's filed uh, with their court case. And then the judge will know at the bond hearing and kind of as the case proceeds whether or not this person had a mental health issue um, at the time of arrest. So we may implement that. Um, here in Brookings County, if there's individuals that have been arrested where there's a mental health issue. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, one thing that may be affected by this telehealth is, so Minnehaha County, when they implemented this telehealth, they saw their numbers of involuntary committals go down. And so the situation here is if we have a an arrest where that person's in custody, a very behavioral health in Sioux Falls will not take that person. So that person's going to HSC. If it's a non-custodial placement and it's just in uh, civil involuntary committal, that person is then eligible to go to a very behavioral health. Well, what Minnehaha County is telling us is that once this telehealth is implemented, that the number of involuntary committals that are occurring actually goes down. And so the person who would have otherwise been committed to Avera or HSC is actually staying here in the community because they feel that resources and treatment um, outside of the involuntary process is actually available. And so that would be a cost savings uh, to the sheriff's office, to the county, in terms of not having to transport as many involuntary committals uh, through the telehealth process, whether that occurs at the jail or whether that occurs on scene with the iPad, our involuntary committal numbers may go down as part of that. So that's encouraging. Uh, Minnehaha County has seen, I don't want to throw a figure out there because I, I don't know if that's 
representative of what we'll have here in Brookings County. I don't want to put out information that may not be um, consistent to what we see here, but it was a big number of the drop of involuntary committals because of the telehealth. So uh, exciting stuff. I We'll see how it goes here in the next year, but Brookings County, Falk County, um, and I think Meade County are some of the pilot counties here. So just an update on kind of what we learned and uh, some of the things that we're looking forward to here on the mental health side of things. So any questions on that? Just, just a comment, and it'll be interesting to see how all that works out. But part of the tension that we've always had in Brookings County between East Central and the hospital is the fact that, and, and we'll see how it works with the tele system mm -hmm. is that the physician or the staff out there would want a commitment where the mental health person would not want a commitment and what would be interesting to see if their involuntary commitments have decreased have any suicide attempts or actual suicides have their numbers increased mm -hmm. because that's where that synergy is between those two things and It'd be nice to know if, if that's made any difference there. The question I would have for Marty is, do you have facilities for the telehealth and the jail at this point? Is that, I mean, the equipment's going to be provided, or do we have a room and facilities for that? Will there be a, a funding request to the county for any of this? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Dan? No. Thank you. We'll move on to commissioner reports and discussion items. We do have some correspondence we received. Uh, DNR to Norfield, I believe that's on a, I can't remember what it says, is that for a manure management plan or something, something like that. And then a thank you from uh, the Uncle Sam Jam people. And so we'll start commissioner reports with Commissioner Pierce. And, and maybe I'll start with a question I had for Stacy. So you were talking about the um, city complete count committee for the census. Where are we at on the county committee? Have we? There are, Pardon Mr. Me? Chair Berthel, there's only going to be one committee, and that, it, this is going to be, at least this is what we did in 2010. We, it's based off of the, because the city on their complete count committee will be beta and, and all the other participants. If we try to have our, a county complete count committee, all we're doing is duplicating what the city does, and we won't get the participation that the city's got. But we can bring in, we can use the complete count committee to reach out to the whole county. And that's, that's what we did in 2010. And so the city of Brookings complete count committee will also deal with the rural areas and the small towns in the county. That's right. That's why I, I'll be on it. And obviously, you will be on it. Okay. And then... For my report on August 6th, I attended Tessier's 100-year anniversary reception at Innovation Campus, which was, was interesting, and, and there was a very nice turnout for that. Attended the reception, or the luncheon, I should say, that John Thune was at on August 13th, and um, he did talk about the 20th Street overpass. Hopefully, we're going to be getting some support from him. We'll see how that turns out. On August 13th, I attended the Downtown Brookings event looking at um, future, again, activity in the downtown area. On, on August 15th, we had a joint powers meeting. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look out at the parking lot when you came to the meeting today, but the um, dirt work is almost completed if it's not completed. I believe that what they said is in the next two weeks we're going to have the concrete or the the cup. Are we doing concrete or asphalt? I just forgot. But whatever that is, we're going to have. <laughs> concrete. Yeah. 
we talked about the bioswale, and if you recall, our, our uh, bid came in about $86,000 under for the parking lot, and the city wants to use some of that money to do a bioswale at, on that drainage ditch that's on the west side. And um, we'd had some conversation before. They came back this time. They had uh, drawings uh, and would like to make that kind of an educational drainage ditch so that they could be showing developers how to how to handle some of these issues as they arise in, in other developments in Brookings. And um, we might have shown a little, uh, the county representatives might have shown a little sticker shock at our last meeting. This time they came back and suggested maybe they would pay for 75% and we would pay for 25%. And they're thinking the cost will be around $30,000. And we did vote for that, those of us that are on, on the committee. The city has hired a consultant to look at all of their facilities in the city of Brookings. And then they're going to um, come up with a long-term maintenance plan. One of the uh, facilities that they'll be looking at is this facility. And we did ask them if, if there was a possibility of having to reach out and having that consultant look at the county side of the building, since they're going to be here anyway, to get any suggestions. And I don't know if anything happened with that, Stacy. I've been... Um, Matt Bartley reached out to me yesterday and we were gone for the tour and today I'm out so I've I've been in contact with them he and I just need to schedule a time to touch base so then we'll they'll be coming back and telling us what things that this consultant said that this building might need I think they're looking at a 10-year period yeah and then um, the other thing that happened at joint powers is we're moving forward with the art in the hallway and it's you probably can say this better than me, Stacy. It's going to be on that wall that's first floor, uh, north entrance, west wall. And we're moving forward with that. Yeah, it's the it's kind of the west end of the city, uh, city development, city engineering that comes right by those couple steps that step up out in front of the finance the office. Yeah, yeah a little, and by the ramp. So. And they're looking at doing some type of unit to attach to the wall that will be similar to what's out at Innovation Campus so that when things are hung, it doesn't deface the wall. And then yesterday I was on the Bridge and Highway tour with all of you, and I wanted to thank you, Brian. That was very interesting. I learned a lot. That would be my report. Thank you. Commissioner Borsma. Um, Tuesday, August 6th. I went out to the highway shop to meet with Brian, and we talked through two kind of major items. One was the EJCDC contracts for highway projects, and then um, kind of walked around the facilities and took a look at buildings and just wanted to see the condition of repair and things that may need attention in the next couple of years. Um, and then that evening went to National Night Out, and uh, the Sheriff's Department and others were there. It was a great evening, really well attended. Um, so thanks for that, Marty, and the deputies did a great job. Um, they put Kevlar on me and the whole nine yards, so it was a very <laughs> weird and surreal kind of experience. But it was a good, it was a good night. Um, and then August eighteenth, met with Dan to go over uh, contracts on the um, jail expansion stuff. And then yesterday, highway and bridge tour. Um, last night then was the East Central Behavioral Health Board meeting and just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that um, there will be an invitation coming to the board for an open house and kind of a grand reopening for them on Friday, September 6th um, as a part of their rebranding and, and um, sort of relaunch of that whole facility. So that would be it. Do you know what time that will be? Um, I think they were talking about doing tours for a good chunk of the afternoon, like a 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock time period, and then a program around 5-ish, potentially. So um, should be a good time. Will they be announcing their uh, their rebranding effort yep. at that time? New name? Uh, the rebranding is supposed to actually roll out the week prior, I think. And so most of that stuff, the new website, um, kind of new naming, logo, all that will come out, um, I believe, this next week, actually, and then... Um, going into the open house afterwards. So. Anything else? Nope. Commissioner Krogman. Uh, August 13th, uh, we'll 
lunch with the legislature, which was with Senator Thune. And then August 19th, we just had our county highway tour, which again was uh, always was always a good tour to see, get out there and see everything. So thank you. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Jensen. On the 13th, I uh, met with Stacy and Brian on the township uh, Colbert grant applications, uh, attended the Thune dinner, and yesterday we're on the tour with the county highway tour. Thank you. On the 6th, we had the planning and zoning meeting. Things we took action on this evening were passed there and improved. On the 8th, the PPCC POD meeting, quite a dispensing meeting out at the BCOAC, and thank you, Kristen, for hosting us out there. Uh, that went well, and there's a lot of things going on, on on that that you'll hear of in the next month or two as we do those exercises. On the 12th, met with uh, Senator Thune at, at a uh, meeting with about five or six of us with him before the luncheon, and then the luncheon uh, was good to be able to hear some of his comments uh, about things that are getting done out in Washington, D.C. that we don't see or hear about. So uh, we got an update on some of those, both at, at the uh, a small meeting and then at the larger luncheon meeting. On the 14th was the leader round table. Uh, we attended that. Both Leanne and I were there for that meeting. Uh, good conversation. Uh, centered around the city's budget and a presentation by Paul Bersino on that. Uh, it looks like they've laid it out fairly well for us to understand it. On the 15th was a joint powers board meeting. Leanne gave a pretty in-depth report on that. Appreciate that. 15th was the LEPC meeting. Uh, Bob has probably reported on that. And then yesterday, the county bridge tour. Uh, at the end of the tour, we did tour some of the drainage issues out in that building, Marty, and we're going to probably try to take another stab at, at getting some things cleaned out out there that are not necessarily on our property, but under the road. And uh, there's some railroad right of way issues there for cleaning that out. So I think we'll, we'll all have some conversations with somebody I know to see if we can't get uh, uh, the city to, to, to move forward to help us with that drainage issue out there. So that's something I think we need to look at. It's not, uh, obviously it affects your, your uh, evidence locker, but it affects uh, some other areas out there too. So it's something we, hopefully we can get a study done of some sort and get it corrected. And that completes my report. I just had one quick thing. You may. With the, um, the Sioux Valley Commissioner's meeting tomorrow, I misspoke, it was, not Commissioner Pierce, it was the the four of you. I, You are the one that's not attend, going out to peer in September. So it's the other four that I did RSVP for, <laughs> and not Commissioner Pierce. I thought that, I, yes, <laughs> I had the two meetings where I had four going and one not, and I had those mixed around. So, so all four of you can feel free to attend tomorrow. So I have to go, okay? All right. <clears throat> Item 12 is an executive session in accordance with House Code of Codified Law 1 25 2 parentheses 4 for ne contract negotiations. Is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion been made. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We will take a five minute recess and reconvene in the executive session room.